Okay, so in this lesson, I want to talk a little bit about templates and how to use them with PyBind. First, starting with a little bit of a refresher of templates and why you're going to need to do the things you're going to need to do in PyBind. So here's an example of a template CPP. And I have a little add function here. So pretty simple, but again, C++'s way of creating sort of generics or a way to reuse a function is this keyword template. And then the data type or data types, you could have multiple in here, uh, T here. So anywhere where T is, that will be replaced by some data type and this function or will come to execute. Okay. The key is here, as long as the data type supports the plus operator, we should be okay. So here's just an example of using two uh, integers. And uh, let's go ahead and just compile this compile as normal. And uh, let's just run our template program and we'll see seven. Okay, and just to demonstrate that this is handling different uh, data types, let's go ahead and use some different numbers here. 5.2, uh, 2.5, and to save that, uh, recompile it, and rerun it. Okay, so we've never specified specifically if this is a float or a double type, but it's just handling the situation and taking care of it. Okay, let's get a little bit more extreme just to show the flexibility of templates here. It's the string data type. And I'm going to go ahead and just put in uh, two strings here. Um, now I can't put in a string literal. Uh, you know, if I just type in strings here, it's going to treat this as a const char star, which it doesn't know how to use this plus operator. So let's just go ahead and uh, let the program crash here for a second. Uh, it's going to give us some warnings here and say, well, it doesn't understand. You know, these are just literal strings here. So again, we have to. When using our function, we have to make sure that whatever uh, object we're passing in or whatever the data type is supports this plus type. So let's go ahead and just create some strings here. S1 will be Mike. S2 will be says hi here. Okay, so we can fill in our arguments. Again, just to show you the flexibility of templates, it can be quite powerful. Recompile it and rerun it. So 7, 7.7, 7, Mike says hi. And it's all using that same uh, my add function. Okay, um, and I was going to call this add originally, but I've named it something a little bit more weird just because it'll be easy to bug. Now, just to see what's going on in the templated code here, um, you can always try to uh, emit the code from the preprocessor. Okay, um, and let's go ahead and just use um, some tool here, and you can you can try to search for uh, my add, and we'll see it comes up here, but we can't really see what code was generated. You can see our template, um, which is cool. See that it's some generic type or whatever. Uh, basically just our syntax. Um, so if you're using Clang, um, you can actually see what the um, actual syntax was here. Uh, let me go ahead and just do the same thing here. Uh, and I'll make this a little bit bigger just so it fits on uh, one line just for a moment. Um, so Clang, X Clang, print out the actual syntax tree, but just the syntax. I want you to see the actual templated codes. Essentially, when you use templates, you're making a copy and paste of this function for all the data types to you. Either a float, uh, a string. Okay, so we should see three versions of my add. Okay, so if I do this, uh, I'll again search for my add. And towards the bottom of this, you'll see here's our uh, template, but we've actually instantiated the actual uh, int version of this, uh, the double version selected here, uh, and then the string version here has this kind of fun type here so you can see uh, how big that that's getting here okay um, so this is just important to keep in mind right it's actually three different functions this is how C++ is supporting this feature of templates okay so you can actually see the code okay so now let's get into the the pi buying part uh, which is what you uh, want to see so that's just our little uh, example with uh, templates and how they're used but you want to actually use this in PyBind. So what I've created, uh, this was the sample that I just ran through, uh, but I have a library CPP and then our logic.py, okay? Uh, so let me go ahead and just split this up. So here's our Python script. Here's what we're going to want to do. Import our function for add, uh, or I've actually called it uh, my add now. Uh, and then let's open up the library.cpp. Uh, so this is going to be our uh, PyBind function that we want to and let's make sure that's my add. Let's call it my add and my add. So again, I'm going to try to build this. Um, we're probably going to see it blow up here. That's fine. 
Um, so let's go ahead and run our build script. Let me show you what that looks like. Um, it looks exactly like the other build scripts in the video for whatever your platform is. I'm just outputting the library.so. Okay, so I'm going to build this. It's probably going to blow up because it's going to say there's no matching member function for call my add because again, remember, this is a templated function. So we need to actually specify what the parameters are going to be. Okay, so one of those uh, instantiations, go ahead and uh, open that back up this window. Um, from playing here, less my add. If we look, one of those instantiations actually look like this, the int version. So actually just one of these. I'm just replacing the one type here. So I need to tell Python, hey, eventually when you generate the code and C++ does its thing to make copies of these functions and um, give you the instantiation for an int or a double or whatever type, that's the one that you're going to expose here. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, make sure I save this. And let's try our build script again. Uh, um, and oops, I got rid of a here. Try again one more time. Build. Here I save. Caps lock is on. Let's for that. Our case W. Now it's written. So now it should build. Uh, and now if I run my uh, logic script here, you should see it adds. Okay. Um, now let's go ahead and uh, push this a little bit further, just again to show the point here. Uh, let's go ahead and try our add with 2.5 and uh, 5.2, something like that, uh, and try to run our Python script. Uh, here we get an error, right? Because it's going to say, hey, incompatible function arguments. You know, we only know about the int version. So what I need to do then is actually export out the float type here. Okay. So now that it's exported, I need to rebuild the library again. Uh, and then I can try my PyBind again. And now it knows how to handle these floating point values here. Um, so that's just uh, with the type. And in fact, I probably want to do uh, a double here. Let's get some better precision. Um, so you might have to play around with it a little bit. Let's rebuild and run. And that's better here. And if you're going to use uh, a custom type here, you might have to actually export out that type. Um, I'm going to just, I'm just sort of curious. I want to try with a string here. Uh, it might blow up. But let's go ahead and just do a uh, standard string here with the library string. And let's do uh, another example here. Strings. Try again. Like tie something like that. Uh, let's see if this actually builds here. Library is going to build fine. Will the Python work? And yeah, it does. I guess it knows how to handle a uh, string type already. Uh, but the point is, if you're going to create your own uh, objects or classes, you need to do this for every instance or every data type that you want to expose this type to. So I've shown this for functions. Um, if you have a templated class, this this applies as well, or you'll need to for each of your functions, export out the int version, the double version, the string version, or whatever other custom uh, data types that you make. Um, if folks are confused on that, I'm happy to follow up on a specific video, but um, this version with the function shows the main idea uh, and the sort of why we have to, for every uh, instance of the type we want to export out in our module, we have to explicitly define uh, the type that we're exporting out because C++ is generating code for each of these templates. And PyBind needs to know about them if we want to use them. All right, so that's it for this video. Hopefully it was uh, insightful for you.